morning. Good to see everybody here in God's house this morning. We appreciate you being here. Uh, it's good to have some visitors with us. We appreciate you being here and uh, apologize. I was downstairs in the Sunday school class and came up a little bit late. And I didn't get around to shake hands with folks this morning, so I apologize. I'll try to get by after service and uh, make you feel welcome. If you have your Bible this morning, we'll read with us. Turn to the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 2. Very familiar scripture. You want to read in your hearing, 2 Kings, chapter 2. When we start reading this, everybody will know the story. And that's good. Familiarity with the Bible helps us understand and helps us get closer to God. Helps the preaching become alive and real and rich to us when, we, uh, when we're familiar with what the uh, preacher is reading. Amen. How many of you have your Bible with you this morning? Raise your Bible up, hold it up, let's see it. Oh, I like to see the Bible in the house of God. I went to church the other night, visited in a revival. And uh, the preacher stood up to preach after the choir got through singing. And the uh, Lord just impressed upon my heart to look around. I was kind of sitting back three or four benches from the front. And the uh, Lord impressed my heart to look around and looked around. And I think everybody that I could see was holding a Bible. And uh, that, really, that really blessed my heart. And I hope you have your Bible with you. If you don't have a Bible, you let me know. We've got some downstairs. We can get you a Bible. And uh, need the Word of God in our hands. A lot of folks have got to where they carry uh, a notepad or something with them to take notes on. That's good. Not a thing wrong with that. Some folks take notes in their Bible. There's not a thing wrong with that. I, I, I want you to fall in love with the Word of God and it be rich and real in your life. All right. 2 Kings chapter number 2. The Bible says in verse number 1, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Now, <clears throat> let me go ahead and make a statement. Hold your finger right there. We're going to read about Elijah and Elisha. And I'm going to get their names mixed up, all right? And uh, if you was in my place, you'd get your names mixed up too. And so if I say one thing, you pay attention. I may, I may say things wrong, may get their names mixed up. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. He said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee. Before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. 
And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he, had also, and when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. If that's correctly read, that's reading verses 1 through 15 in 2 Kings chapter 2. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Brother Travis, will you lead us to the Lord in prayer? Appreciate that good prayer, and I trust that you're going to pray for us for just a few minutes. I don't think we'll be long today. Uh, I know when I say that, y'all let out a sigh there because you think that means I'm going to be really long, but uh, I don't think we've got uh, a real long sermon today. Got something that the Lord laid on her heart maybe Thursday evening. Uh, been on her heart since Thursday, and uh, kind of a th just just a thought, not a not a whole lot of direction. In it, sometimes the Lord will give us real clear direction in the way he wants to go, wants us to go, and sometimes he just gives us a thought, and we try to go with that thought, Brother Donnie, and uh, we just try to follow the Lord as best we can, but I'm going to give you the title, and then we're going to go back and look at some things here in the Word of God. This is what the Lord's laid on our heart. Now, you pay close attention and pray for us for just a minute. Here's what I want to preach about. Elijah is gone. Now what? Elijah is gone, now what? All right, so you think on that for just a minute. And I want you to look at some things with us here in the Word of God. And I want us to look at the life of Elijah and uh, Elisha here as they come together in this great, fantastic miracle that we find recorded for us in the Word of God. And uh, here we see some things that are transpiring. And I'm going to go back and lay some foundation here and begin to look at it. And we know that Elijah, we, we know about Elijah. We know a lot about Elijah. Elijah is the prophet uh, that we read about in the Word of God over in the book of 1 Kings that went up on Mount Carmel and uh, withstood Ahab and Jezebel and prayed fire down from the Lord and repaired the altar, John. And uh, We know that story really well. We know uh, what Elijah did. And then when Elijah uh, went, we know how Elijah went by the brook when he got discouraged uh, and we know that God sent Elijah there to call a young Elisha to go with him and be, uh, uh, be really uh, uh, his successor as he was going to step off the scene not very uh, uh, long hence. And he called Elisha to follow along behind him and to see what he was doing. Uh, uh, so that he might carry on the work of God. Uh, and we find that Elijah called Elisha uh, and, and they went together and they too were in this uh, work together. Uh, uh, but it come to pass in a time uh, uh, that the Bible said it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah uh, into heaven by a whirlwind. Now I want you to understand something right now. Uh, Elijah knew what was going to happen to him. Now think about that. Elijah knew he was about to step off the scene, and evidently God had revealed to him that it was going to be by a whirlwind. Now, I don't know about you, uh, but I, uh, that, that kind of knowledge might scare me, all right? 
I'd be a little bit worried when the clouds come by, wouldn't you? If I, God told me you're going in a whirlwind, I'd stay in the house, probably. But Elijah knew that he was about to step off the scene, and Elisha was with him. Now, we've got an account of something here that some people, and, and if you read and study this, there are people that are going to say, and there are Bible scholars that will say, well, this and this happened. But the Bible don't say exactly what they're alluding to. But I will say this to you. If you go and you study in 1 Kings and 2 Kings and 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles, you'll find that God had put together some groups of prophets. They were centered primarily at Gil Gilgal and Bethel. Uh, uh, and here we find also at... Uh, at Jericho. And so the Bible uh, uh, tells us that these prophets were gathered there. And some of the writers will say, well, it was a college. I don't know that it was a college. I don't know that it was a school. I don't know anything like that. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible just simply alludes to the fact that there were some prophets gathered in each of these places. And evidently, it was customary. Now, I am going to say this because I believe the Bible bears this out. Because uh, 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 it was customary for Elijah and Elisha to visit these different groups of the prophets. And they knew who they were. And they knew Elijah and Elisha. And maybe Elijah and Elisha would teach there. I don't know. I'm not going to say they did. not going to say they didn't because the Bible doesn't give us that information. Uh, but I am going to say they were familiar with one another. And they were a group of prophets. And Elijah goes to, uh, uh, and Elisha and Elijah go on this trip. And the first place they stop, they come to Bethel. Now Bethel in the word of God has a very, uh, a very special place. It's where, we, of course, we know uh, uh, that Jacob saw the vision of God. And he had this uh, great revolution, uh, re revelation. And he said, it's the house of God. And Bethel means the house of God. And we find that that's where they made their first stop. And they visited with the prophets there. And the Bible said that the prophets come to Elisha and, Elisha and told him, said, the, uh, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. So, I don't know if God had given these prophets some special insight and they were prophesying. It could be that Elijah had told them that he was leaving. Could be that Elijah told them he was leaving. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with uh, uh, Elijah letting them know that. But here we find they had told Elisha. Uh, and said, uh, 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 Elisha's going to be taken from you. And he said, I know it. Just hold your peace. And they go on. And they go from uh, Bethel. They go down to Jericho. And the same thing happens. The prophets come to them. They say, hey, uh, Elisha, you know Elijah's going to leave you. He's going to be taken from you today. And he said, yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. And they go from Jericho. They go down to the river Jordan. Now what's Jordan? Jordan in our Bible, it's always a type of death and separation. Always. Jordan's always a type of death and separation. Now watch this. God takes them from the house of God to the place of death and separation. That's a journey, ain't it? From the house of God to a place of death and a place of separation. What are you getting at? Just hold on. I'm trying to show you that Elijah's gone and, and, and ask you to answer this question, now what? So Elijah's been with him. Elisha knows the miracles. Elisha knows that, that God's about to take Elijah away from him. They go down to the river Jordan. Elijah takes his mantle off. And I don't know exactly what this is. I've tried to visualize it, tried to study it and see what it was like sometime. It was some type of uh, 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 overcoat, some type of wrap that he would wear probably around his shoulders. And it was probably made of leather. And it, when he says it wrapped it together, uh, what they say and what they used to do, Brother Donnie, is he would roll it up so that it would look like a staff. Uh, and it would have the uh, resemblance of maybe a, a long staff, a rolled up piece of leather. Now that would do a good thing on, on something if you needed to get a hold of it, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, but he had this, and the Bible said, now listen, I want to, I'm going to give you something right here. Uh, I'm going to give you something right here I want you to really think about. Uh, uh, because we've got Elijah uh, standing by a river uh, with a mantle in his hand that looks like a staff. Uh, and I see in my mind a picture of another man standing by a body of water uh, with the staff of God in his hand. And they both about to 
start at the commandment and the power of God. And his name was Moses. So you got Moses that's going to part the water with the staff of God and the power of God. And you got Elijah here. And the Bible said he smoked the river Jordan and the waters parted thither and thither. And a lot of people, I, I'm, I'm about tired of preachers now. Listen to me. I've heard enough preachers question whether or not people, when God parted the river, I've heard people question whether God parted the Red Sea and they went over on dry ground. The Bible said they went over on dry ground. Did, did they go over on dry ground right here? They ain't got a stick. They ain't got a drop of mud on their shoes no way. It's dry. They dust. It's dry. The Bible said it was dry. It's dry. They going across the Jordan River on dry ground, and when they cross the Jordan River, they get to the other side. And how far they travel, the Bible doesn't tell us. But they've gone from the house of God. And they've gone down to the place of death and separation. And the Bible said there's 50 men of the sons of the prophets standing there looking to see what's going to happen. Uh, they see the river and they see the waters parting. And Elijah asked Elisha a question. Now watch this. Now I preach this different. I probably preached it incorrect before. But I think, uh, I, I think when we study out the word of God, I'm going to show you something this morning. Elisha says this. I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Now, what is he really asking for? I don't think Elisha is asking to do twice as much as Elijah ever did. Don't think he's asking that, Lamar. Because there's only one other time in the Word of God that the phrase double portion is ever mentioned. It's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy when, when Moses gives the law of an inheritance and the eldest son, the heir, Brother Jack, would receive a double portion of the father's inheritance. Now watch this. And I'm going to back this up with something. Notice what he says in verse number 12. Y'all stay with me. Y'all with me? I ain't got to my message yet. I'm laying foundation. Look at what he says in verse number 12 when they're parted. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father. All right. I believe that phrase double portion is referring to an inheritance and I believe what Elisha was asking Elijah was, when you're gone, let them recognize me as the heir. And he's not asking, listen to me, listen to me. He's not being selfish. He's not being arrogant in that. He's simply saying, let them recognize me for the work that God has called me to do. Now listen, I told you I'm preaching a message called Elijah's gone. Now what? Elijah's gone. Now what? It's not going to be left undone. Somebody's coming on the scene. Somebody's falling along behind. And somebody's going to do the work of God uh, if they'll just follow the path that God wants them to walk in. And I believe all Elisha was asking of Elijah was let them recognize me. Let them accept me as the one that is the heir of this uh, uh, office, the heir that's going to step in and do what God wants to be done. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so. Uh, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they went, went on and talked, Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind in the heaven. Now, and Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Now he rends his clothes right here. He says, My father, my father, terms of affection, terms of endearment. He rips his clothes in grief and mourning because he's just been separated from the one his mentor, Brother Donnie, his leader, the one that he was looking to right here as his spiritual father. He said, he's gone. I'm never going to see him again. He's been separated. We're, we're, uh, we're divided now. We're at the place of Jordan. We're at the place of death and separation. Elijah and Elisha have been, to, have been separated. Uh, uh, no longer are they going to be together. And he rents his clothes in two pieces and he's in mourning. And he goes over and he picks up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Now he can stand at the bank of Jordan all day long. He can stand looking at that river all day long. But not one thing is going to happen until the power of God shows up. 
He can hold that mantle in his hand all day long, but not one thing's going to happen until there's some power to go with it. Now listen, he's asked for God to let him be seen as the, the heir, the one that's going to fulfill the office. He's standing at the bank of the same Jordan River. He's got the same mantle in his hand, and he strikes the river, and he says, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? You can have all the uh, training. You can have everything in the world. You can have all the uh, uh, machinery. You can have church. You can have everything in place. But until the power of God shows up, ain't nothing going to happen. Ain't nothing going to be right until the power of God comes by. And here the power of God falls upon Elisha. And the Bible says in verse number 15, uh, or verse number 14, that the waters, waters parted hither and thither, and he went over. And then the sons of the prophets which were at Jericho saw him and said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Now the same spirit that was on Elijah has fallen upon Elisha. And Elisha, uh, listen, now has got to go on. Elijah's gone. What's next? Elijah's gone. Now what? Elisha didn't go back. Uh, and he didn't start mourning. He didn't lay on the bank of the river. He picked the mantle up. And he said, where's the power of God? Uh, where's the Lord God? And the waters parted. And he went in power. Now I want you to watch some things. I want you to watch some things that happens. First of all, when he does it. Uh, listen. I've heard it said that Elijah, and I may have even said it, and if I did, I'm sorry because I don't know it to be true. I've heard it said that Elisha did two times as many miracles as Elijah. I don't know that that's the case. The Bible doesn't tell us that. We've got about nine miracles recorded by Elijah, and we've got about 15 recorded by Elisha. Now that 15 times, or nine times two is not 15, Okay. I don't know that everything's recorded. I don't know that I can say that. But we do have some similarities. Now I want you to watch this. Elisha didn't have to do everything new. Elisha had some training. Elisha had some uh, things that he recognized. Listen, uh, he just seen Elijah part the waters, and he goes down, and guess what? He parts the waters, amen. Uh, uh, there's some things that we have to do. Uh, uh, listen, Elijah's gone now. What I'm trying to give you some encouragement this morning, church, I'm trying to let you know that the same power of God uh, uh, that was here in the 40s and here in the 50s and here in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and on and on and on is still here this morning if you'll just pick the mantle up and go for God. The power of God hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. He just wants somebody uh, to go on and do the work. Amen. And stand where he wants them to stand. Listen. <clears throat> Told Last Sunday, was that the first time she'd been in church here, right? Your, your friend, your girlfriend, I don't know if she's your girlfriend or not, but she might be, don't matter. First time she'd been to church here, right? All right, she might get a little bit nervous, me preaching like this this morning. All right. I told him we needed to have Ed here last Sunday, and she would have gotten nervous, but that's all right. Anyway, listen, I'm excited this morning. Why? Because when you look in the Word of God and you see God's plan of succession, uh, uh, God's not going to let His work go undone. He's not going to let His work stop. Listen, He's going to give us some familiarity to, with what we're doing. Elisha had to part the same river. Uh, you find and you study this thing out, uh, you'll find that when uh, Elijah uh, went to a woman, listen to me, went to a widow woman that had, that, that uh, listen, whose substance was almost gone. Uh, uh, she said, I'm going to have two, uh, I'm going to make the last meal, I'm going to heat it with two sticks, and me and my son are going to die. But Elisha goes to a woman who's a widow, and she says, we ain't got nothing. I'm dead broke, and they're coming to take my sons away. And God told Elijah to tell the woman, said, you take that, uh, uh, he said, you make me a cake of meal first. And he said, and then you eat next. And the Bible said that the barrel of meal never failed and the oil never wasted. They ate and they ate and they ate and they ate. Elisha goes to, the, to a different widow woman. And listen, she said, we ain't got nothing. 
We're, the, the debtors come take my son's way. I don't have nothing. I'm going to just die. Here it is. He said, what have you got? She said, I got a little cruise. Oh, he says, you go borrow all the vessels you can find. They poured it out. She said, son, I need another vessel. He said, there ain't no more. And she asked Elisha what to do. Elisha says, sell it and live on the rest. Amen. What you do? God got a retirement plan that you ain't figured out yet, but if you'll go in the power of God, he'll, he'll make things for you so you can go on. He'll make it so you can live and sustain. Listen, so Elisha and Elijah both helped a widow woman sustain life. And listen, and both of those widow women's sons died, and Elijah raised one from the dead, and Elisha raised one from the dead. See the parallels? They both parted the rivers. They both, they both helped a widow woman with her substance, and it increased, and they survived. They both raised a son from the dead. Listen, there's a lot of parallels here. But then we see Elisha having to do some things that he didn't have any training for. You know what he did? He trusted that power of God. Amen. There's lots of things we're going to be faced with. Lots of things we have been faced with as churches and as church members. Listen, lots of things have come up in these last days that we're going to have. And it ain't going to change. There ain't going to be new battles tomorrow that our forefathers didn't have to fight. Amen. There's going to be things happen in our life. And all we can do is go in the spirit and the power of them that came before us. Elijah's gone, but now what? Amen. Elijah's gone. What did Elisha do when Naaman came to him, the Syrian, with, with leprosy and said, Listen, I want you to heal me. Elisha didn't go run from that. He said, He didn't look flute. Boy, I don't have that in my owner's manual. Don't have to know what to do here. He had the power of God on him. Amen. And what did he say do? Go wash, go wash seven times down the Jordan River. And what a, what did Naaman do? He complained and he belly ached, but he finally went and done it. And he couldn't, uh, and he was healed. Listen, and Elisha uh, uh, healed a, 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 a water source that was polluted, and he healed a, a food source that was polluted. We don't find that Elijah ever did that, but we find that God was using Elisha in the same way because the spirit of the power of God that was on Elijah. Elijah had been, had been uh, bestowed upon Elisha. He was heir to that office. He was following along as the son, the heir. Listen, he wanted that double portion, but what he wanted uh, was for people to realize uh, that Elijah's gone. Uh, Elijah's gone. Now what? Uh, Elijah's gone. Now what? It's time to keep going, church. Uh, it's time to go forward with God in the same power that our forefathers did. You look back and history's a great thing, ain't it? History's a great thing. Our church history at Mount Zion and these mountain churches around here are, is rich and powerful and revivals and souls getting saved and people going for God. But let me tell you something. I, I said this the other night up at, uh, up at Corinth in the, in the fellowship meeting. I want you to listen to me. And I don't mean anything derogatory. I don't mean anything mean toward anybody. But listen to what I'm about to say. There will never be anybody else saved in a 1950 revival. 1950 is gone. We can't live in the past. Past is a great teacher. But we've got to go in the same spirit and the power that they went in. Not anybody going to be saved again on August 14th, 1977. Today's August 14th, 2022. 44 years ago today, I got saved. Yes, All right? Hallelujah. August 14th, 1977. That may not be 40 years, four years. Is it? How old am I? Am I 50? How old am I? 53? Am I 53? I'm 52. How old are you? 55? <laughs> 45 years. I guess it's 45 years ago. 44, 45 years ago, whatever it is. But ain't nobody else ever going to get saved on August 14th, 1977. I, I listen, don't mean I was the only one that got saved that day. There lots of people got saved that day. But it ain't going to happen again, amen. amen. But I can tell you right now, the same power that was there that morning, the morning that revival started, the same power that was there, and that morning when revival started, and listen, uh, uh, Brother Teddy Anderson preached, and he's buried right out here in the
the cemetery. Uh, uh, listen, uh, preached that morning. And, and, and he got uh, uh, over into the glory land. And God come by. And souls got saved. And I was one of them. Amen. And I Hallelujah. thank God this morning for the power of God that was there. But I'm thankful for the power of God that still exists, don't you? Amen. It hadn't diminished. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? I know this is a familiar message. I know it's uh, things you've heard before. But it's time that the church picked the mantle up and realized we've got to go in the spirit of God. We're not going to be able to, we don't know everything we're going to face. There's things that are new that are coming. Uh, but it should not discourage us from picking up the mantle and going back down to the river and watching God work. You see, when you, you see, when you study this out, watch this. Hallelujah. Watch verse number 23. In that same chapter, the Bible said he went up from thence into Bethel. Well, he's going right back where he was. He knows there's familiarity to it, isn't there? There's familiarity in serving the God that our, that our, our parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents served. We still sing some songs. We still sing some of the same songs they used to sing. You know, we've got some new songs that weren't around. Some good songs. Some old songs, new songs. There's some familiarity to it. Elisha went to Bethel. He knew what was going on there. He'd been there before. The Bible said he, in verse number 25, he went from thence to Mount Carmel. Well, that's the mountain where uh, Elijah prayed the fire down. He knew what had happened there. He was familiar with the place. But there was some unfamiliarity to it. But he didn't let uh, what he didn't know, he didn't let what he didn't know keep him from doing what God wanted him to do. And what I want you to understand this morning, uh, church, we can't let what we don't know about tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, hinder us from doing God's work today. We can't let things that we don't know stop us from going forward with God today. He took the mantle that fell from Elijah. He picked it up, smoked the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And guess what? He showed up, didn't he? The waters parted hither and thither, and Elisha went across. Just like in Elijah had just went across on that dry ground, and they go back across, and he goes back across, and he heads back to doing the things that he knows how to do. And he's going to trust God to give him directions to do the things he don't know how to do. Church, I'm trying to encourage you this morning. I've, I've listened to message. I said one night here not long ago uh, that, that I've heard it. I've tried to hear and uh, listen to a lot of preaching. And what I keep hearing is encouraging messages. Encouraging messages. Encouraging messages. People trying to encourage the church. People trying to encourage God's people. There's no time to quit. There's no time to give up. There's no time to throw in the towel. Sure, I know there's people that had not come back. Ain't been, there's people that haven't been in two and a half years. I understand that. I'm not happy about it. It hurts my feelings. It hurts your feelings. Uh, but listen, uh, whether they personally not coming because of me, that's fine. Uh, listen, I can fix that problem. Uh, but my, my instinct tells me uh, uh, that if they really wanted to go to church, they'd go somewhere and not sit at home. Amen. Amen. I believe that. But where are we going to leave our mark behind? What are we going to do that's going to make it easier for the crowd that comes on behind us? Listen, I've, I've been preaching now. All right, so August 14, 1977, got saved. August 14, 1999, preached the first sermon. All right, here we are. I'm glad there ain't no more dates for me to remember. Amen. Remember how old I am. That's terrible. Don't know where I'm at. 53, I think. So 45 would be the right, the right number. Well, John, I used to think that. I used to think I would be the last generation that would ever come through the church. And we'd be raptured out, Brother Ronnie. I used to think I'd be it. That my generation would be the last ones. But now here we are. we got grandkids in church. There's more coming along behind us. Do you ever think you'd be the last generation that come through? That the, the one behind you, that, that you'd see the rapture of the church, there won't be anybody. But listen, it's time to keep following. It's time to keep teaching. It's time to keep sharing. It's time to keep preaching. Uh, see more women, men, women, boys, and girls get saved. People get right with God. Uh, people get in the house of God and go in the power of the ones that went before them, amen, uh, uh, with some familiarity, but with some newness about it because there's new challenges. And there's some new obstacles to overcome. 
Not everything we're going to do, we've done before, but that's all right. Amen. Not everything we're going to have to do has, has been done before, but that's all right. Listen, I don't ever remember uh, reading about the things that we read about in the news now and the problems that the world's facing and, and catastrophe and disaster and all these uh, phenomenons going on. Listen, that just tells me that the power of God is on display. He's shaking this world and this country one last time for a revival. And here we are. And what are we going to do? We're going to go in the spirit and the power of them that went before us doing what we can the way they used to do it and attacking where we, uh, and, uh, and listen, going forward uh, uh, with familiarity, going and facing new challenges and new obstacles, what's going to happen? Listen, if we quit, what, ha what would have happened? Now, I know this, I, I know it's useless to speculate because it did happen, but what if Elijah had just never, or Elisha, what if Elisha said, I told you I was going to mess up. What if Elijah never, or Elisha never picked up Elijah's mind? He'd have probably died on the other side of the Jordan River. It ain't worth letting somebody die on the other side of the river for us to sit around and feel comfortable. It's worth picking the mantle up and going back down to the river and letting God do something, ain't it? It's worth picking the mantle up and going forward for God. And listen, there's going to be things that we don't like. There's going to be things happen we don't like. Listen to me. Elisha... Uh, uh, goes back to Bethel and there's some children come out and mock him and call him bald head. I don't know if he had hair or not. It don't really matter. They were mocking him and he turned back and, and cursed him and two bears came out of the woods and tore. The Bible said tear 40 and two children of them. That would not be pleasant. Amen. No. The things the church is going to have to do in the future may not be pleasant. We may not like every obstacle we have to face. We may not like every challenge that comes our way, but if we'll go in the spirit and the power of God, we'll do what's right if we follow the power of God, won't we? The Bible said, uh, 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 when we read this, the Bible said he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. What a great thought that he could pick up the same mantle that Elijah had. And I know this has been preached many times. I know you've heard it preached on a lot that we've got to pick the mantle up and go forward. But listen, it won't do. It won't hurt you to hear it again. It won't hurt me to hear it again. That we've got to pick the mantle up and go for God and the power of them that went before us. We've got jobs to do. You got a job to do. I don't know what it is. But I've got a job to do. I know God called me to preach. That's the job God wants me to do. That's what I'm trying to do. I know what the calling is on my life. Do you know what the calling is on your life? Do you know what the gift is that God's given you? Everybody that's been saved, God's bestowed at least one gift on them. At least Amen. one. Everybody. Hallelujah. God's bestowed at least one. Maybe two, three, four, five. I don't know. But God's bestowed at least one gift on you. If, you, if you've been saved, if you don't know what it is, I'd get to looking. And I'd get to asking. Hallelujah. I'd get to pray and say, God, what is my Hallelujah. gift? Show me what it is and show me how to use it. Amen. It's time that we picked the mantle up and did what God wanted us to do. How is it with you all over the house? Now, the first thing you got to do, Lamar, get a verse of some invitation song, Karen or whoever's going to play, Gail, somebody, come to the piano and start playing softly if you don't mind. I want to tell you something. Before you can do anything for God, you got to know that you know that you're saved. If you've never been saved, you've got to start with that assurance. And if you don't have it this morning, come to the altar and let God bless you and save you. And then tell us about it so we can be blessed. But then, if you've been saved and you know you've been saved, you've got to start doing what God wants you to do. Pick the mantle up. People have left the mantle behind for you and I. And they want us to come on and follow them. <clears throat> You know, what I want, listen to me, listen to me. I want them to come behind me to do a thousand times more than I've ever done. Ten thousand times. I want them to do be better preachers, better teachers, better singers, better pastors. And I want to help them do that in some way. And they say, well, preacher, 
uh, uh, you're supposed to get, I, there ain't no honor and glory in this for me. He must increase and I must decrease. All right? What I want is for people that follow to go on far and above. You see, there's a lot of people in power today and uh, there's a lot of people doing things today and they won't do things because they're afraid they'll make somebody that went before them look bad. They, they're afraid they'll, listen, they're afraid that if they do this, it'll make the person that was there before them look bad. Listen, that ain't never going to be my, listen, you ain't never going to offend me if you come along and do something behind me and it's ten times better than what I've ever done. That ain't going to bother me one bit, Brother Donnie. Listen, uh, that ain't going to stop one. Listen, uh, I want you to understand something. you got to go in the power of God. Don't let me limit. Don't let me be a hindrance. Don't let me get in the way. You run over me and go on forward. Amen for God. Do you know where you're at with the Lord this morning? Have you picked your mantle up? And are you going where God wants you to as we stand all over the house? The light just gone. Now what? Elijah's gone. Now what? What are you going to do? Go ahead and sing. Lord, what's your name? Bless you.